Hi Booktube, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. I bought a new lavender jumper yesterday that was in a sale and I have a whole big group of new books that I want to talk about so pose, pose, pose. <laughs> so the Booker Prize long list is going to be announced very soon. I know I'm going to be excited about that and want to read a number of the books on the list but there are also a whole group of other books that are being published in July so I want to talk about a lot of those books, um, many which the publishers have sent to me and some which I've bought myself um, that I'm all really eager to read as well as probably you know reading the the prize list and, and all the hoopla and everything that goes along with that. I really love the word hoopla. <laughs> so first off are not new books but newly printed um, books of classic books by Iris Murdoch, uh, the writer who this month it was the 100th anniversary since her birth and vintage editions have published these absolutely beautiful new editions of her novels and she's a novelist that I've read a few of her books in the past, hugely enjoyed them, um, including her Booker Pri Prize prize winning novel uh, The Sea, The Sea. Um, so here's this new edition of that. And, um, and I talked about at the beginning of this year in a video when I, I made a video about 19 classic books that I want to read in 2019 and one of those um, was The Bell. This is um, one that yeah I'm very keen to read and, and hope to read very soon. Um, but also I should say these new editions also have introductions by um, writers. So A Fairly Honorable Defeat has a new introduction by Garth Greenwell. Um, this is a novel that I really liked of hers. And The Sea of the Sea has a new introduction by da Daisy Johnson, um, who was of course shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Plastic Emotions by Shiromi Pinto. And this is a novel uh, which is loosely based on the life of Minette de Silva, who was a architect in the 20th century. And she's um, apparently a forgotten feminist icon because um, she was a great artist but also she was involved in political movements and yeah this just sounds like a really really interesting novel. It has a blurb on the cover from Neil Mukherjee who calls it an act of illumination. Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben. Uh, this is a novel about a woman in Jamaica who's finally granted a visa to move to the United States and work there um, but when she, um, she, she leaves behind her mother and her young child in Jamaica um, and when she gets to America she finds it's, um, it's not what she was expecting it would be. Um, so it's her tale but also the tale of her daughter as her daughter is growing up in Jamaica. And I've not read this author's first novel uh, called Here Comes the Sun but I'd heard great things about it and yeah keen to read her. The Hiding Game by Naomi Wood. This is a novel about the Bauhaus movement in the 1920s in Germany and a group of people involved in that and, um, and how their, their group sort of splits apart over the years as political pressure grows in Germany and then it like skips to a time in the future um, when they meet again and sort of secrets are uncovered. So yeah, I'm very keen to read this novel. The Far Field by Madhuri Vijay. This is a debut novel um, um, which is has been getting a lot of acclaim and somebody commented in my um, my Booker Prize Lomless predictions video um, that they think this book will win the Booker Prize this year. Um, so this is a novel about a young woman from a privileged family who um, whose mother dies and after her mother dies she moves from Bangalore to um, to, she travels to Kashmir um, to try to find a lost friend of hers and along the way she encounters all the social and political upheaval of the, the regions that she travels through. So um, yeah, I'm very keen to read this debut novel. This Hostile Life by Malatu Uchi Okari and this is a book about the lives of immigrant women in Ireland and the various stories of their community and um, this is a group of people that you don't often hear about when talking about modern Irish life so this is a really interesting new Irish writer. Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Ellman. This is a massive novel over a thousand pages um, which is all about a housewife in America um, contemplating the, the state of America today and, um, and yeah it's been getting um, a lot of buzz and it's just one of those books that I feel so intensely curious about you know when you get that feeling. The Missing of Claire Dillon by Christelle Davos. Um, this is a um, novel in a 
quartet, um, the Mirror Visitor Quartet, um, a, a fantasy series set on another planet that I've been really wanting to read. Um, it's the second book in that series. And, and look, this is, a, this is a proof edition, but look how beautifully it matches my lavender jumper. Um, but I think the, the final copy is, is gold, and I'll put that up, up there um, so you can see. But yeah, I've been really wanting to read this, this quartet because it just sounds so intriguing and interesting. I haven't read the first book either, A Winter's Promise, um, but I've been meaning to. So I need to catch up with this series um, because the, the second book is coming out now and obviously there'll be two more. Water Shall Refuse Them by Lucy McKnight Hardy. And this is a novel um, that I'm very keen to read. It sounds very moody and atmospheric. It's um, the story of a teenage girl whose younger brother dies and the family moves to a, um, a rural place where the teenage daughter takes up her own form of witchcraft until um, she meets a, a young man that she uh, starts a relationship with. And um, yeah, it just sounds like a really um, atmospheric book. Rife, uh, 21 Stories from Britain's Youth. This is an anthology of essays um, that actually helped fund because it was published by Unbound, um, which is one of these crowdsource um, publishers where uh, somebody posts a project, that um, a book that they want to have published and then um, people contribute money towards it, towards the actual publication of it um, so it can come out. So, um, so yeah, um, I, I get really excited about um, backing initiatives like this. And this is co-edited by Nikesh Shukla, who also edited the great anthology, The Good Immigrant. And, um, and uh, yeah, so they decide to put together this anthology because they feel like the, the stories and the voices of youths today in Britain um, aren't being represented in the popular media and aren't being represented in opinion columns. And so this is giving them that voice. And um, so they, um, it's essays on a whole wide range of subjects to do with modern life. The Aunt Who Wouldn't Die by Shoshendu Mukhopadhyay, And this is an author who has published a lot in his native language of Bengali, but I think this is his first book to be translated into English. And, um, and he's an author who's in his 80s. And this, the, the story of this novel sounds wild. So it's about a young woman who marries into um, a quite wealthy and well-established family and the matriarch of that family dies. And, um, and she finds after that that she encounters this aunt, the, the ghost of this aunt, who sort of steers the, the family and influences the family from beyond the grave. And um, yeah, so it just sounds like such a teasing plot. And this is just the, like, the best title for a novel ever. Next are reprints of a couple books by Gordon Byrne. And, um, and I was mistaken. I thought this was a new novel, but it was um, first published quite a few years ago. Um, but this is a, a reprint. And, um, and it's a novel about a woman who um, was a very famous vocalist in the 1950s in Britain, a real life woman um, named Alma Cogan. And, um, but she died quite young. I think she was only 34. And so he writes a novel as if her life had continued after that. And he, he fictionalizes what, um, speculating what he thinks her life would have been like going on. But he also takes in a lot of facts from the time, um, a lot of uh, real people and um, yeah, sort of speculating about what her relationships would have been going forward. And the next book is called Somebody's Husband, Somebody's Son. And this is a nonfiction book, um, which is all about the, the life of um, Peter Sutcliffe, who was accused of being the, the Yorkshire Ripper, um, a mass murderer in the 1980s, I think, um, and or the 1970s and 1980s, and he was finally captured and arrested. And so um, Gordon Byrne, he spent a few years researching Peter Sutcliffe's life and living in his village and getting to know um, the, this, this mass murderer and why he turned into this. Um, so um, yeah, it's meant to be a really powerful nonfiction account. Next is a book that I'm very curious about um, because it's a novelization of a famous film and that's Pan's Labyrinth. And, um, and yeah, I haven't heard many cases of this where a novel is written about a film after the, the film came out, you know, most of the time it's the other way around that, that films are based on novels. Um, so yeah, I'm really curious to see how that'll work because I love this film so much. And so I feel a bit tentative about it, like how that will work um, in novel form. And, and um, but, um, but it's, you know, it's such a great story about a, a young girl who um, is in a politically tumultuous time in Spain 
and her widowed mother starts a relationship with a man who's the leader of a very um, sort of totalitarian regime um, called Capitan. And, um, and yeah, the, the girl's strained relationship with him, but how she discovers this magical world of fairies in the, the surrounding landscape around his house. And um, yeah, and it sort of plays upon that whole thing of, of what's real and what's an imagination. And um, yeah, and it's, it's such a brilliant film, but, um, but yeah, how will it be as a novel? I don't know. I'm curious. The Woman in the White Kimono. Um, this is another uh, book whose cover like nicely matches my jumper today. Um, I have a purple theme today that I'm working with. Um, so this is a novel by Anna Johns and um, it's a, a, about a, a woman in Japan in the 1950s who has an arranged marriage into um, a quite prominent family, but she finds herself falling for an American, I think an American soldier, um, sailor, and, um, and she has an affair with him and has a baby with him, um, which is quite scandalous at the time. And, um, and so it shows the repercussions of that through the generations. Reckless Paper Birds by John McCullough. This is a, a book of poetry which I bought um, because I love um, this, this author's writing and poetry. And, and, um, and yeah, he just has such a unique perspective. I love following him on social media too because he, he, um, he posts these really funny, like quirky things, um, just giving a, a really different, odd perspective. It's really reflective of his style of poetry and um, yeah, so very eager to read this. Sweet Sorrow by David Nichols and I've never read anything by David Nichols before. He's a hugely popular author. Um, he wrote One Day. So if you've read books by him and, and really recommend, um, can let me know. Um, so this novel um, takes place in 1997. It's about a uh, young man, sort of a coming of age type novel, who falls for a girl but in order to get with this girl he needs to join the company which has some sort of sinister edge to it and um, and so I, I saw David Nichols read from this book earlier this year at one of Damien Barr's literary salons and um, yeah so I'm quite keen to try it. Z by Joanna Cavena and if you, you don't know in Britain the, the letter Z is pronounced Z. Um, so, um, so this is a future set dystopian novel where an algorithm has been made to create complete human happiness but of course the computers find that humans have a lot of flaws and, um, and so you know, there's a dramatic tension there. And this is you know, a theme which is played out in a lot of dystopian fiction, but I think she's meant to be a really interesting, innovative writer. And, um, and so yeah, I'm quite keen to see how she plays out this scenario. And she plays a lot on, uh, on sort of the question of, of truth and, and what um, truth means. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it's had a lot of praise, so really interested. Summer of My Amazing Luck by Miriam Taves. It's another purple book, which um, fits in perfectly with my theme. I mean, it's a reprint of um, her novel. And uh, this is a novel about a group of single mothers living on a housing project in Winnipeg. And, um, and one of the mothers, she, um, she, she really misses the father of her children. And so a friend of hers starts writing letters to her as if she were um, that, that, that child's father. So yeah, a very intriguing plot. And I've wanted to read more by Miriam Taves. Next are a couple of nonfiction books about um, the environment and nature writing. And you know, I just made a whole video about a nature writing prize and books from that I'm eager to read. So um, I was excited to get a couple other books recently um, that sort of fit in with that theme. Um, so the first is called Bloom by Ruth uh, Kassinger. This uh, nonfiction book um, about algae or algae do you, do you pronounce it algae or algae? I, I'm not sure, never sure, but whenever you know, I think of algae, um, and a lot of people think of algae, they just sort of think of pond scum, but actually algae comes in many of different forms and, um, and, and is used in a lot of different products and, was, uh, and creates a lot of oxygen. And um, so she goes into the, the history of algae and um, talks about how its many uses and how it could possibly be farmed to, to help stop climate change. Um, so yeah, that sounds like a really interesting story. And the, the cover is very tactile and 
it's sort of all knobbly and yeah, good. So um, the, the next book is by Mike Parker called On the Red Hill. And Mike Parker, he married his male partner when um, gay marriage became legal in the United Kingdom. And they had a, um, some friends who were a much older uh, gay couple who, um, after they died, they, they left to Mike Parker and his partner all of their possessions. And as they were going through these possessions, they, they found out all about their, their life in this small Welsh town. And so he goes into the history of this small town and talks about rural gay life um, throughout the, the decades. And, um, but also talks about the changing seasons in this, this, um, this small town. And so yeah, very interested in this story. And finally, I have a novel which I am very excited about, and that is Nicola Barker's new novel called I Am Sovereign. And one of the reasons I'm very excited about this, because I just saw that Nicola Barker is gonna be in conversation with Ali Smith at the London Review Bookshop at the end of this month. So I just bought a ticket for that. And um, yeah, very excited for that. And Nicola Barker's writing is wild. Um, she, she's written a number of books in like many different styles and on many different subjects. And, um, and this novel is no exception to that. So it's about a man who is a boutique teddy bear maker. And this man is trying to sell a house um, to a couple. And while the couple is there, one of them gets hit on the head, I think, with an oyster shell. And this causes them to question the whole nature of reality and existence. And the, the, um, the, the line between fact and fiction gets blurred in this novel, because I think it like actually goes into a bit of Nicola Barker's own life or, or something. But yeah, it's, it's, I mean, sounds absolutely wild, but um, can't wait to experience it and read it and see how she tackles this subject and to hear her talking about it with Ali Smith. So that's all very exciting. Um, so yeah, whole big group of books here that, um, that I want to read and I'm eager to read as well as, you know, the, um, the, the Man Booker Prize list all coming up. So let me know if you've read any of these books, um, if you're interested in reading any of them now in the comments below, and uh, I will chat to you again soon. Hope you're doing well, and uh, yeah, happy reading everyone. <laughs> Bye.